Okay, a fresh problem for today. Something I wanted to f get fixed for a long time already is on, on my little Harley Benton 5 watt. There's a lot of crackle on the gain knob, which is in fact original to the amp. It was wired like that. It was called volume, but it was in fact a resistor, a variable resistor, which changed the gain on the first preamp tube. But listen. Not so good. Scratchy pot? Maybe, but I don't know. I think it's something to do with uh, DC getting to the pot uh, in some sense. So, let's first uh, walk the dog. Okay, with regard to the scratchy gain up, I replaced the preamp tube with the AT12 AT7, uh, which has uh, I think 60 or 70 gain factor uh, when compared to the 12 AX7, uh, which has a 100 gain factor. So there's less gain in the amp, and this has solved most of the crackling in the gain part. While uh, looking at this issue, I discovered that the volume pod has some oscillation issues if you turn it up very high. And then the crackling of the pod is still. So I will need to put in uh, an extra resistor to keep some resistance uh, even when the master volume pod is all the way open. But uh, as far as crackling on the gain knob, this seems to be a, seems to have gone away by lowering the gain on the preamp state. So I might go around and change it another way. So it's not a scratchy pot indeed. Oh, it's a sand off. Come on, Bonnie, let's get the mail. Okay, this is where we're at. Uh, most of the crackling in the gain knob is gone. Uh, but there's still some uh, parasitic oscillation going on if, uh, if the volume and the gain is maxed. You can see it on the scope like this. Which is not so good for the, for the output tube. We should fix it. So to reduce some gain. Let's look at the schematic. Okay, this is what's going on in the chassis. This is the master volume control. I got my obligatory chopstick. Uh, master volume control, and it's got some resistor to keep some resistance between uh, this and uh, and the output tube. Um, but this is only a 1.5k. So the problem always arises when I max this uh, master volume. So I'm gonna put in. Uh, a high resistance in here. Okay, here's a stock schematic for the Harley Benton GA5. Um, as you can see, there's some strange stuff going on here. The 68, 68k input resistor is normal. We see that in most amps. But then, the resistance to ground creating input impedance is mostly, always, one meg, sometimes even more. So this is wrong. Um, then signal moves like this through the plate. We get high voltage here through a 100k resistor uh, from the V plus, and it's coupled to the next stage through a 22, 22 nano coupling cap. But then we get a one meg resistor. Why? it will reduce the signal by a factor of uh, 5 maybe then we get another resistor to ground and a 1 meg pot which is sort of like the volume pot in the original Harley Banton we should uh, really lose this and lose this but then again we realize that the 1 meg we were missing on the input it's been sort of copy pasted here this should have gone there. 
The inspiration for the Harley Benton is of course a Fender amp schematic. If we look at the impact for, for this amp, we can see that we see the same values. 68k on the input, there are two inputs here, but a 1 mag to ground. Then we go to the grid of the first tube. We have a resistor here, which is also present in the in Harley Benton. We have a 100k resistor, plate resistor, and a 22 nano coupling cap. And then just the one mag pot leading into the next stage. Ella, go to ref. Ella. So these are the models to the input stage that I did a few years ago. I still replaced the input input resistor to 33k, put one mag to ground, um, changed a little in the cathode biasing here, put 1k5 and as low as 4.7 microfarad cap across it. Maybe I'm gonna change that. Anyway. I also reduced this capacitor. I might revert back to the original value of 22 nanofarad. I removed these one mag capacitors, the one to ground and the one in the in the signal chain, and I put in a tone network um, with a tremble, mid, and bass. And I kept this uh, pod as a gain pod. It's sort of um, determines how much signal goes to the second tube. After the signal goes to the second stage there's another coupling cap and there's an EQ board. It's in fact just one knob, tone control, um, but it's sort of a, a fixed Marshall stack tone control where there's only one knob uh, arranging the bass. I removed the whole board and replaced it with the master uh, volume control and uh, I also put 1k5 in line here. I might, I will change and up this value, but I'm also gonna put this resistor on the other side of the pot. I think. Also calculated uh, the plate dissipation on the uh, EL84, and it's incredibly high. <laughs> it's 12 watts. It's at its max. That's why I took out the vintage tubes and put in some new tubes to burn. But uh, I will have to change this resistor to a higher value to change the bias a bit on this uh, output tube. Far the best way to remove these knobs as these are push push-ons and not they don't have screws in here is to use a pair of scissors and put them underneath so you don't break the the knob. Oh, there you go. In order to know how much resistance we will have to put in, uh, we can use the pot. If we have it all the way down, there's almost one meg of resistance, uh, pleading all the signal to ground. And uh, if we open it up, we see the resistance getting down, going down, and there's maybe like a problem with the pot. It's like a dead spot. We may be replacing it just uh, if I can find one. The red lead is the one leading into the output tube, so I'm gonna put the resistor, I'm gonna have put the 50k on this side of the pot.
Okay, well, the church bells are ringing. I'll show you that I've quickly put on a 50k resistor on the on the master volume pot and uh, change it to the other side of the so it's on the side of the output put tube. Let's test it. <coughs> okay, and the 50k on the master volume has fixed most of the oscillation, but not everything. So there was still too much gain. Um, I wanted to show you on the scope, but uh, something happened. The amp went completely dead. Um, I switched in some other tubes, didn't change anything. I checked some voltages. There's 360 volts all over the uh, power section. So I started checking in the resistors. This one is okay. That one seems to be okay. I didn't check this one yet, but this one is. R11 seemed to measure out quite strange at a few megs while it should be while it should be only 220k. Let's have a look. Get like 10 meg dropping to 9 meg. minus one mag. I think it's completely open. Let's fix that. The only reason this 220k resistor is here is to drain the filter capacitors when the amp is turned off because there will be high voltage stored in the capacitors and this resistor will drain them to ground. Um, so we might as well take the resistor out if it's acting crazy. See what the uh, difference I is. I think I found another problem in the power section. It, it should be in the power section because uh, the voltages uh, further on in the circuit are too high. So these step down resistors are not working. In some way, uh, one of them or two of them may not be working. I also found this little uh, which should be 10k resistor and maybe it's a have a look at when I measure it, it goes like this almost 60k nothing 160k nothing Let's change that as well. Okay, but I think I will be tackling the rest of the work in a, another video because this video will be getting too long for my phone. <laughs> I have to get a new phone. Um, so, check back for the second episode of uh, modding the Harley Benton GA5. Thanks for watching. Okay, one note still about the schematics and what's going on with this yeah, Fender Champ clone. What in fact happened is that for a long time now, for a few decades, European and American companies have been outsourcing stuff to China. And maybe they stopped doing it now, but anyway, the Chinese fellows got the plans. They have the schematics and they already built these amps before. So they're now putting out amps based on these schematics, but without any understanding about where they came from and not really realizing that uh, it's based on a Fender Champ and they could, could have copied this schematic. But this is changing also now, the last few years, Chinese are getting smarter.